Welcome and or welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah Blackwell and today we're going to be talking about captive captor romances. I am so excited to be doing this video in collaboration with Riley from Riley Marie and Jess from Honest Fiction. Those two are just really good friends of mine and I love them, love their content. You guys should definitely click the links below when you finish watching this video to go subscribe to their channels and watch their recommendations for captor captive romances. So captor captive romances, that is like one of my number one all time favorite trope for romances. I also just enjoy captive captor situations in regular books too, like thrillers and fantasies. It's just something that I like. I like to see how the dynamics unfold. I think it makes for a really messy, fun situation, but also can be a little scary. You never know how it's going to turn out. I just love it. I love captor captive situations. And I hope you do too, because I have eight recommendations here. These are my favorite eight captive captor romances. And I tried to also make sure this list was dynamic. It has a lot of different romance books in it so that no matter what you are into, there's hopefully a recommendation in here for you. Before we get into this list, if you have not already subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel. Click the like button and comment down below and let me know what your favorite captor captive romance is. I'm always looking for new recommendations. If you want to follow me on social media, all of my links are down below in the description, including my Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter. With all of that out of the way, let's just go ahead and get into this list. I also want to add that if you are going into any of these books and you generally need to check your trigger warnings before going in if you have a specific trigger or anything like that. Make sure to check your triggers for all of these books. They're all mostly dark books, dark romances. There are lots of triggers, so just make sure you check that out if that is something that you need to do. So the first book I have here on this list is Ivan by Sophie Lark. I read this book more recently and really enjoyed it. It was the third book by Sophie Lark I have ever read and it was just a really fun time. This is a little bit on the shorter side. I think it's just barely over 200 pages. This book is on Kindle Unlimited so if you have Kindle Unlimited make sure to go check it out because this is a really fun captor captive Russian mafia romance book and it was just really really cool. I loved both of the main characters. The main character Sloane is an assassin and so she is paid to off people and she gets paid to off our hero who is the head of a Bratva family like a Bratva gang family but in the process she gets captured by him and their romance ensues from there. There's a really fun suspense plotline going on at the same time and it's just a really fun action-packed steamy fun time. I think Sophia Lark is just one of the funnest mafia romance authors that I have read and this is no different. I am actually looking forward to continuing on with this whole series because I hear it's really good. I know there I think there's at least five or six books in the series um, and I love Bratva mafia romances and so this whole series is Bratva. Number two on this list is a historical romance and that is The Highwayman by Kerrigan Byrne. This is probably one of my favorite historical romances I've ever read. It is so sweet, so fun. The book starts with like a flashback and our main character is a little girl and there's a little boy. He helps her escape from a bad situation and she vows like in the future because they marry as kids that she is married to him. She's a widow. She considers herself to be a widow. So she is working at the police station or law office or something like that and a highwayman is taken in and he ends up capturing her, kidnapping her, taking her hostage and the romance goes from there and this book is really really sweet. A little bit dark. This is I would consider it like a dark historical romance but it's really sweet, definitely steamy at times and it's like a little bit emotional um, but I, I really love this story. So that brings us to number three on this list and that is Amanda Bouget's A Promise of Fire. I'm really happy that I was able to thrift the original covers to this trilogy. I'm a much bigger fan of the original covers. I don't really like the new covers, but I like people on my covers for romances. That's just the kind of girly I am. And I think this cover really shows like how much fantasy and adventure is in this plot as well. This book is just 
the perfect course in like how to write a fantasy romance. This is just perfection. Amanda Bouche gets her world building just right on point. She puts a lot of effort into it, but at the same time, the romance is at the forefront. And it's just, it takes a really talented writer to get that combination between fantasy and romance spot on. And I really think that she does it in this book. This book also has one of my favorite like sub tropes of captor captive romance, and that is the one horse trope. Our main character is Kat, and she's hiding away at this like circus. Um, she's trying to keep hidden away, not be found. She doesn't want people to find out who she is. One day Griffin shows up at the circus. He knows who Kat really is, and he captures her. Um, he thinks she's this kingmaker who will be able to really help protect his newly won kingdom. So he captures her, he ties her to himself and he puts her on a horse and they travel together on this horse for like days tied together. And I love that trope, the tied together, captor captive on the same horse. Like it just leads to this close proximity, like ultra close proximity tension that, yeah, these characters hate each other. This is a really well done enemies to lovers book as well. And I just adored it. And then the steam is on point. It's so, so good. Um, so I think this is the perfect captor captive fantasy romance if you want to check one out. So next I have a another mafia captor captive romance. You'll find I feel like that is the subgenre of romance that does have the most captor captive situations but this is actually my favorite mafia romance of all time well three books it's really three books so far i think the fourth one's either just coming out or about to come out i'm not sure but this is mafia madman which is the third book in mila finelli's like mafia series it starts with mafia mistress then it's mafia mistress then mafia darling and then a Mafia Madman. So all three books technically do have like a captive captor situation. I would definitely suggest starting with Mafia Mistress if you haven't read that already, because that first duology in the series is really important to fully understanding what everything that's going on in the third book, Mafia Madman, if that makes sense. But they all three have captor captive tropes, but in the third book, Mafia Madman, that has the most like quintessential captor captive trope because the first two books it's more of like a forced marriage kind of situation and so she's kind of like a captive but it's not quite to the same level we have in the third book like a total like prisoner situation um and so it's a little bit different but so what i'll tell you is in the first book mafia mistress we follow our heroine who is young she's i think like 18 she wants to go to college she's been promised that she can go to college but instead her father who's in the canadia canadian italian um mafia he sells her off to get married to the son of like one of the biggest Italian mafia kingpins or I don't know what you say kingpins like the head or whatever um so this is like a really big powerful guy and she's been sent to marry his son he comes to pick her up and he decides that he wants to keep her for him himself the dad um so this is like a fiance's dad trope and a bit of captor captive um like I said throughout the whole series the third book follows a different couple and like I said, has an even more quintessential captive captor trope. But I don't want to tell you too much about that third book because I feel like that would ruin some things for the first book. Anyway, if you're looking for a really good mafia captor captive scenarios, definitely check out this series by Mila Finelli. So number five on this list is a Monster Why Choose Romance by KB May called Ravaged by Monsters. This book was a seriously, seriously fun time. If you are looking for a Why Choose Monster Romance that is just basically action packed, full steam ahead, let's just say it's steamy, it's hot, it is spicy, spicy, spicy. Careful now, this Frito pie is spicy, spicy, spicy. It's fun. 
I just went into it not taking it too seriously because this is just fun and steamy. It's crazy. Um, our main heroine. So in this world, we are living in like a dystopian world where monsters have completely taken over and humans are basically either slaves or they're hiding away in the forest just trying to survive. So we've got a dystopian world and our main character is basically fighting monsters trying to get the help that her people back in the woods who are hiding out in the woods need. So they've gone to the city, her and some other people, to try to get like medicine and stuff from like a pharmacy. And while in that process, they are captured by these monsters. And then she is sent to an auction where she is sold off. And these monsters see her. There's four of them, I believe, four of them. And these monsters are fun. Like these, <laughs> one is like invisible. One is like a big beast. Well, actually two of them are like big beasts. And one is like... I don't even know how to describe him. He like hides in closets and he can like travel through closet worlds, but he's really, really, really attractive. Like he looks the more human, I think, and attractive, but he has these like super long horns. His body parts can somehow move around when he has gone through his closet portals and things get weird from there. Um. Anyway, the point is that this is a really fun time. Any used to lovers, dystopian, why choose? Lots of fun buzzwords that I love, and I really had a blast with this one. So if you're looking for a super, super spicy monster romance not to take yourself too seriously with, definitely check this one out if you are going for that captor captive trope. So the next book I have on my list, I think this is the sixth one here, is The Last Mafia Romance. And this is called The Bratva's Heir. This is another Bratva romance. And we start off with our hero who has been imprisoned. And he has been um, assigned a psychologist or a psychiatrist or counselor, um, and that is our heroine. So she starts seeing him, and he ends up capturing her after seeing her a couple of times, captures her, and then kidnaps her along with him in his escape from prison. So he escapes from prison, he's kidnapped her along with him, and then the story gets really good. There's a lot of like BDSM in here. So we've got a dominant submissive type of kink as well. And like I said, captor captive brought for romance. This has been co-authored by Jane Henry and Sophie Lark. And I definitely can see Sophie Lark's like fun, just let's have a blast with the situation kind of influence in this book. And it was just a really fun time. I enjoyed it. It was pretty quick. I think it's pretty short. I think it's under 300 pages, just like Ivan was. And there's something I always like about like a psychiatrist with her patient, kind of dark romance. Um, and that was what happened in this one. Okay, so number seven on this list in no particular order. I don't know if I mentioned that already, but these are in no particular order is Guild by Raven Kennedy. We start out with our main character in this book, who is in a plated prison. She has been gold touched by Midas and she's being kept as his pet. Now, I can't tell you everything about this because if you don't know much about this whole series, I don't want to spoil it for you because the twists and turns are the funnest part. But just know that this is or becomes a captor captive trope. So that's all I can say about that. But our main character in this book is going through Stockholm Syndrome. She is scared of the world. She thinks Midas is protecting her. And so she kind of just spends her days drinking, being really wrapped up in the emotions and feeling of Midas, obsessive over him, not considering herself or her health. Um, she's never left out. She's never let outside. It's really kind of a sad situation. But... This becomes a really fun fantasy romance, and I've read the first three books in the series. I'm really looking forward to getting to the fourth book, and I believe the fifth book comes out in December. Finally, let's talk about a book that, let me first say, is not for everyone, and that is Enthralled by Gianna Darling. This book follows a girl, and I guess I said already there was no more mafia romances, and... That is true only in that our heroine is the daughter of someone who's in the mafia or connected to the mafia. The hero is not in the mafia. So 
it's kind of like, I don't consider it a mafia romance, but we have our main character who basically ends up having to be sold to pay for her father's gambling debts. She is sold to an extremely, extremely rich man who is like nobility in England. She, the book starts out with her in Italy. So she is Italian and she's sold off and she only goes along with it because her mother and her siblings lives are threatened. They've threatened to unalive her family if she does not go along willingly with this transaction. And the transaction being to sell herself as a sex slave to a man that she she doesn't know this man or she thinks she's never met this man but we soon find out that she has and I won't say any more than that that's not a spoiler it happens pretty early on in the book so I'll just leave it at that but I tentatively say this is not a romance and hear me out on this this is a duology for which I have not read the second book. From what I know, there is an HEA at the end of the second book. But the first book in and of itself, we have, we follow our heroine developing Stockholm Syndrome throughout the whole book. And still to the end of it, she clearly has Stockholm Syndrome. So because of this, and there is no HEA at the end of the first book, I would more call this book very spicy romantic suspense. I don't know that it is necessarily a romance. Um, I still have to finish the series to really gather my full thoughts on that, but there is a lot of spice. This is extremely dark. So there are triggers all throughout this book. The hero is, some might find redeemable. I personally do not find him to be redeemable, but he does a lot of awful things to the heroine. So just keep that in mind. Definitely check out triggers. This is not a book that is just like a happy-go-lucky romance. This is not even like a regular dark romance. This is, like I said, questionably romance. So I must say, though, that whatever we categorize this book as, and no matter how hard the situations were to read, I really enjoyed myself reading this book. I just couldn't look away. It was like a freaking train wreck and I just couldn't stop staring. I mean, every reader is different and there may be people that are really looking for this kind of book um, when they're looking for a captor captive scenario. So this is definitely not even just like BDSM. I would say this is a master slave relationship. So just keep that in mind before going into this and not necessarily a consensual master slave relationship. Actually, it's not consensual. So lots of sexual abuse there is um, non-consent. Definitely trigger warnings for eating disorders as well. So check out, check out all your trigger warnings. Um, but for it being a train wreck, I couldn't look away from. I just really had a fun time with it. I enjoyed myself a lot. And so I just had to include it on this list. Okay. I really hope you guys enjoyed this list of my top eight favorite Captor Captive Romances. Make sure that you go check out Jess and Riley's videos. They will be linked down below and check out their recommendations. They've got a lot of good ones and I'm sure you'll find a lot more awesome recommendations from them as well. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Click the like button and comment down below and let me know what your favorite Captor Captive Romance is. All of my social media is linked down below in the description, including my Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter. Until next time, fellow readers, keep reading and living your best life. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray as you fade away. As you fade away.